So welcome back everybody. This is probably gonna be a three part series here. We're down to the end of our drive and it's time that we get us a security gate in. All right, so here we are at the end of our drive and let me explain to you the layout and the thought process that went into this because this may help you whenever you decide to start laying out your fence and gate. So you can see currently our gate is over here right near the highway. Well, that's a bit of a problem. We've started getting so many semis in here lately with ordering things and box trucks and all. If you're gonna wanna close a gate, you do not want one that close to the road, not even really for your UPS trucks and all. You're kind of pinning them to park on the road should the gate be closed and you're not home or available. And that's making a very dangerous situation. So we wanna think for our truck drivers here. So your typical semi with a 53 foot trailer is around 70 to let's just say 75 foot long. So we're gonna leave at least 80 foot to our gate right here so they have room to pull off the road, nudge up to the gate. We're gonna make sure the gate opens in so they don't have to back out for a gate to open out. You just don't ever wanna do that. Now, the next thing we need to consider, now that we're gonna be putting in a permanent gate that's always gonna stay closed, well, that's gonna change our deliveries and other things. Some delivery services will allow you to put a code in for deliveries of packages, FedEx, UPS, post service. But let's face it, a lot of them, they're not gonna open the gate, they're not gonna come in. So I wanna leave adequate room over here for a drop box for our packages. That'll keep the stuff out of the sun, out of the rain, and visually not have packages sitting by the end of the road in case theft is really bad in your area. Next thing to consider, do you have future plans of adding anything at the end of your road? Most people will not, but us, well, because we're trying to make our little homestead workforce, I'm eventually gonna put a firewood stand down here we may get into who knows vegetables and all kinds of other stuff plus we need room for that drop box right there so i want to make sure we have really wide room here not only because we're on a curve that's very important for a semi and they need lots of room to whip in but we want to make for sure we have room over here for those future add-ons that i'm going to do all right so because we typically need to leave a little over 70 feet for a box truck i want to give them a few more feet of wiggle room in case they don't come all the way up to the gate and i want them to know for sure the back of side of their trailer is not out there we're going to measure out 80 feet that's important too because i'm doing my post spacing close to every eight feet we'll cover that a little later in this episode and i've bought well 10 posts to go this way on the potential long side here all right now we're going to measure it off i highly suggest if y'all do much projects and work around the property yourself get you one of these little measuring wheels they are so handy and i find i use mine often i decided to go ahead and measure in 90 feet i believe this is going to be one of those situations to where the more room we give the better All right, so after spending a while yesterday ripping out the old fence, gate, and post, I knocked down some high spots with the tractor and box blade just to get everything relatively level. There's too much elevation change here to go stripping out all the grass. But this will make things a little more consistent when uh, spacing the boards off the ground, pulling string lines, etc. I've also got all my flags laid out where I want my post to go. Quite a few more on this side because it's the outside of the curve, which is a longer stretch and everything has a bend in it except what goes up and down the side so i've got everything visually looking good we're going to spray some dots drill some holes we're going to drill oversized holes so we can move the post inside and out with some string lines and get everything nice and perfect that's also worth mentioning from post to post i did seven and a half feet that way it's about 15 feet from the center of that post all the way to here and i can stretch 16 foot lumber have plenty of room to play in case something gets off then i can just trim my horizontal boards i don't want to do a post exactly eight to eight because well if anything gets off a little bit 
with eight foot lumber or 16 foot lumber is all of a sudden going to start leaving gaps which is technically okay because you're going to see that i'm not butting boards perfectly together and i'm capping from the outside of the post to cover up all butt joints this will make sense as we start laying and nailing up the boards All right, so the importance of the string line is not only does it allow me to get this section of fence lined up with that section all the way over there when there's a break you can kind of get away with some straightness but i want to keep it all straight going this particular direction but the other important thing about the string line is it also allows me to know when my posts are straight see the string line right here how it's perfect i like to keep mine slightly spaced off of the post that way i can tell when i'm interfering with it but this lets me know when my post is square or not especially on a straight line also you noticed i put a round post in here at this corner i did this on purpose because we're coming with flat boards here and i have to make a sharp bend back this direction to follow the path of the road i did not want a square post here because my board wouldn't nail to it if the post is flat right here my board's going to wind up being this direction to be sticking way out. The good news is we're going to trim all this with one by sixes. So you're barely going to see the round post driving up. It's going to look squared off. But keep that in mind. If you have an odd sharp angle to make, a round post will help you. The other thing you can do is carry a section of fence out here and slowly start breaking it back. I did not want to do that. Have multiple angles working back. The other thing worth mentioning, y'all seen that I put about six inches of gravel in every hole. That's to allow for proper drainage. I like to allow the ingrain of wood to be able to free flow and drain out. 
I'm putting concrete around every post because it does make it solid. This isn't necessary, except for corner posts where you're going different directions. You want to brace those really well. We're not even going to get into the debate of does concrete rot a post out. I personally have never seen it at least not in my short lifetime, as long as you give proper drainage down there. You're gonna have a bunch of people tell you, oh, that's gonna rot it. I've pulled a lot of posts many years old and haven't seen that, but I am a huge believer in free drainage in the bottom of the hole. It's also worth mentioning your soil type can make a big difference too. We have a very free draining sandy soil here in Florida. If you're in thick clay and other places that really just hold damp moisture, that could be a little bit of a problem. But down here talking with fence builders and other people that I personally know that's, you know, been doing it as long as I've been alive. Just go with good quality post, free drainage in the bottom. A lot of them say concrete or not is perfectly fine. All right, so it's next day. I decided to go ahead and knock this section out by myself, and it was very, very difficult trying to work with 16-foot lumber. So I've got Tiffany out here with me today, but let me explain what we've got going on here. By the way, I highly recommend you get a second set of hands for doing this at a minimum. And let me also say, I am not a fence building professional at all i'm just a guy sharing his experience you can learn the good and the bad out of this so unless you have perfectly flat ground you need to decide your bottom run your gap your spacing what do you want everything to look like my ground actually goes up and over hill right here if i was going to do a really long run with a lot of hills i would space my bottom board the same distance off the ground so it flows with the hills but if you have a relatively flat section there's a, only a few inch change from this post all the way to the road just like over here you can see I got a large gap down here and then it gets relatively tight up there i decided to run all my boards perfectly level it looks really good to the eye when you're driving in when everything's nice and perfectly level as well but again if i'm gonna do a long stretch over a bunch of hills well i'm gonna space the bottom board the same amount off of the ground so it flows and i want my fence to flex that way my goodness if you read on the internet there's so many different spacings you can do whatever you want most people say if you're going to do three board fence i'm doing four board right here you can see four boards on the outside you want to do no higher than 48 inches which is about down here because your gaps get so big in between your three boards when you do more boards they say you can go up to five feet i am just under five feet right here i'm actually at 57 inches just worked out with some spacers and all that i had i don't think i would want any more of a gap than what you see right here it's starting to get a bit wide, but we're perfectly fine with the look and we like the higher fence. It kind of blocks and hides everything. This is a pretty big entrance, so we want everything to look big. All right, so this is all personal preference. My bottom run, I spaced off the ground nine inches because I did a little bit of math and kind of figured out where I want to stop up here. All these fences are based off of my shortest post that's in the ground over here. Make sure you find your shortest post because you don't want to start installing fence to a certain height and then you get over here and go, uh oh, I'm six inches short on this post. So I set this fence up to stop. And we're gonna cut the post off up here the same height as the post back behind me. But I did nine inches off the ground. You can do six inches off the ground, whatever you'd like. And then I cut me some spacers that you're gonna see here in a minute as we install to put in here. And they're all about eight and three quarters of an inch. Again, I did this odd spacing nine and then eight and three quarter, eight and three quarter, plus your board width, which is five and a half inches. So I would stop up here on my shortest post height. Speaking of my paneling here, it is best if you can find somebody that carries the big true inch, inch and a quarter, inch and an eighth, rough sewn 
pressure treat fence panels. I could not get enough of them locally, so I had to go with your standard one by six pressure treat, but I highly recommend you go with the thicker boards because it's gonna make a more sturdy fence, and that's just a better board for fencing. But on this short little run of what we're doing here, I'm not too terribly concerned. Your post spacing also makes a big difference. I'm about seven, seven and a half feet on center for my post. You go any wider than that, you start risking all these boards buckling and bowing. You don't want to get a very big space in between your post. All right, so since I'm going to keep everything off of level and not follow the shape of the ground here, I come to this post, put me a line down at nine inches off of flat level ground. We're going to put our first run above it. I've got my level over there and we're going to nail it in and we're just going to level every single run all the way back around then we'll use our spacers for much quicker installation going up and now that we got the boss on the job we can get to work <laughs> yep <laughs> huh yeah All right, so as you can see, I'm putting quite a few ring shank galvanized nails in. You want to use those because this type of treated lumber out here will rust out of standard nails. So I always use galvanized. You can see my board hangs over quite a bit because I did a very tight post spacing. Again, we don't want all that crazy warp going on. So I only put nails in on this side, not all the way across because we're going to draw a line right here and we're going to cut this board off to butt our next one too. Then we're going to cap everything so you don't see all these nails and those butt joints. All right, next we're going to use our circular saw. And you can see I set the depth of the blade to just be slightly deeper than the boards that we're working with. That way I'm not cutting and gouging out my 6x6 post. Well, to make a difficult job already more difficult, my wife just got called into work, something that's never happened before, ever gets called in. I guess now I'm gonna show you how to do the rest of this very aggravating job by yourself. All right, so one other important point we need to talk about, and you're gonna see me doing this going forward, I staggered my seams. So I did a, started with an eight foot board here, seamed in the middle. Come back with a 16 foot board, it seams down here. Back to an eight foot board seam right there, 16 all the way across. Because we're staggering our seams, that makes for a stronger fence. All right, y'all, again, I am no building expert when it comes to fences. Uh, this is actually my first wood fence ever, but I like to put a lot of thought into my projects before we get started. So again, 
the whole start of this project, we set our fence and wire gate's gonna go right here back off the road to give us just enough room for a semi to pull in with a trailer. That way, if for some reason I don't ever have the gate open, which I always plan to, should we get a delivery and they get caught off guard, the semi's not out on the highway. But we also really need to consider how the gate opens because how a semi has to drive in. Now, if your gate is set up on a straight road and a straight entrance, none of this applies, but you better put some serious thought into your gate, the size, the opening, and the direction it swings when you put a gate on a curve like we're doing right here. All right, I know I've got the camera way away and you can't even really see what's going on here, but I need you to visualize this curve here. So say a semi comes whipping and pulling in off of a major four lane road right here, which is where they typically come. They're gonna have to make a wide swing on the highway come back in here and they're gonna need to drive straight this direction that I'm walking right here to make a wide swing on the curve that curves back around behind the camera. You gotta think of how they have to make wide swings and wide swings to the left, wide swings to the right in order to make turns. So we're about to build a fence off right here to a post and the gate is gonna be on the other side. I've been struggling on which side I wanted the gate to swing, but think about something. If the gate's this direction and swings in, well, it's gonna point in about 90 degrees, and because we're going with a long 20-foot gate, the gate's gonna be pointed toward the edge of the road right here. And this is on the more blind passenger side for the semi. So that would force them to have to drive way in toward the trees, and well, they can't really swing back to the right behind you. Their trailer is most likely gonna catch this gate that is swung open because it's such a long gate. So that lets me know I need to put the gate on this side. So that means if my gate post stops right here and we've got a 20 foot gate across the road, it's gonna open up to hopefully at least a 90 degree angle right here pointing back toward the trees. That's good because that's a straight shot out to the highway and how the semi is gonna need to come in and straighten itself up to drive straight a long ways off the road to make this wide swing around on the curve. Same way when coming back out. They need to make a wide kind of straight shot over in order to not hit the post on this side. So before I set this last post right here and put the last of our wooden fence to this section, I need to square up from that post to this post because, well, the gate, the fence, and another section of fence over there, we want it to be nice and squared off to the fences that we currently have. This is where I would typically pull a string line from post to post and then we go out here and start spraying and setting. But I have a very long 200 foot tape measure, which I happen to need right now. So I'm kind of kind of use this as my string line. I need the measurements off of this anyways, because we want to center the gate up perfectly dead center and then figure out exactly where to put the post on either side. So we'll just pull this tape across as kind of our straight line. I'll wrap it around this other post all the way over here. Plus I need these measurements. So I've decided I'm gonna custom build our gate. You're not gonna to wanna to miss the next episode. I'm really excited about that project. It's gonna be a big project too. And I know that we're gonna do a 20 foot gate. And because I'm custom building it, I can change that size as needed. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave a 20 foot opening here more than enough. We've had a 16 foot gate here forever and I've gotten semis and stuff in, but it was a bit tight. 20 foot's where we're gonna go on this project. So I've just measured all the way across and I am 38 feet, eight inches. So I know 19 feet, four inches is my center point right here. And I'm gonna pull off 20 foot on this tape. Now I'm gonna center up the 10 foot mark at the 19 feet, four inch center of this big tape. And now I know on either side where to mark put another post in and we're not going to put a post in or wood paneling on this side just yet because it's going to be such a robust and heavy and custom gate well we're going to need to put a steel post a lot of concrete and reinforcement in over there i don't trust a six by six wood post to not warp under the weight of this particular gate so we're going to focus on this side today wrap this episode up all right so right here's the end of the gate we're going to come back in a little because we don't want the gate touching the post we're going to leave a gap there and again, we can adjust the gate to whatever size we want since we're custom building it.
So as we wrap this particular video up, I want to give a big shout out to my friends over at Cashway Building Products in Perry, Florida. By the way, they're not paying me to say any of this. I've been using them for years. I'm going to throw some photos up. Our area just recently took a horrible hit by Hurricane Ida, and their business was probably one of the hardest hit in the area. Their main building's roof was completely destroyed, water all inside of the facility. They've got a lot of rebuilding to do, and they're a backbone to the local community that needs all these products to rebuild their homes. Hurricanes hit, they're on the news, you think about them, and then everybody kind of forgets about them after the fact. Lots of people around here are gonna be impacted for years. So if you're in the North Florida area, I would highly recommend that you go out and support Cashway Building Products in Perry, Florida. I'm trying to do that myself along with some other local small businesses. They really need your help right now. Thanks. And here's this side right here with the curve to match the driveway coming in. And in one of the next videos, we'll put our section in there to a steel pole and make our gate. All right, I'll show you this side right here. And here's where I did the sharp bend back around the round pole. And I just capped it in three sections. Turned out looking pretty good, I think. We got the bend to match the driveway here. And then our section that the gate's eventually going to close to. My first time ever doing a four board fence. There's a few little mistakes made with some spacing out, but you visually don't see it, especially after I work some of that bow out. Uh, and then there's a few things that I learned along with this. Hopefully you did as well. Don't forget, next episode is probably gonna be a couple of weeks away if you're watching this as soon as I release. Custom welded gate with some personalized touches and uh, we're gonna make this thing nice and robust. Then in the third part series, we're gonna go into all the stuff that's gonna open and close this and control it. Thank y'all so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.